North America, what am I doing here, you ask? I'm failing, but you won't believe how it happened. Generally, this region is the strangest place to play in this game, but you will see. Welcome, imperialists, this is Lucas. I chose a nation in the game that I can pronounce the name of, which is Kueta, from such a very large cultural group, which is super important here, because it is related to the federation creation mechanics. Actually, I have a question, are there any achievements related to the natives? If so, let me know in the comments. Our great chief Homotemiko Haseola rules over us. He was known for being a random leader with random statistics. As a tribe, we don't have social estates, which will hurt us a bit. But we have a system for creating powerful federations. And how powerful is this mechanic? You will see later. We also have a fairly unique form of tribal governance. And right now we are a clan, we have some oral traditions, ha ha ha. And we are also a settled tribe. From what I can see, we can initially invite four nations. Only and exclusively to our federation. And that's what we do. Starting from the nearest to the farthest. We need to hurry because they will start forming their own federation soon. Wow, suddenly there are many more of them and eventually I managed to create quite a sizable federation from all these tribes. Yes, it even has someone here, I don't know why. And thanks to all the members of our federation. Now the federal progress of all these reforms here is growing at almost two times the speed. It's quite a lot. We just need to be the strongest chief of them all. What does it mean here? Not with the development points you have. Not with the size of the recruited army or the manpower you have. No. No, the most important thing is the base manpower, which is what is written here, maximum is. I will try to add those countries on the edge of the federation, so I will send diplomats to them and improve relations. Maybe make some alliances here, I don't hire advisors yet. First, we need to build a certain house that reduces our advisor cost by 50%, and we can have only one ceremonial fire pit. We also have a mission tree, and to be honest, it's weak, except for one thing here, sunset invasion, which gives us a new type of unit, and a new technological group, which is very powerful. Now, what are federations. In general, they are very similar to the trade leagues, which of course we have in the old world, so it's just a kind of defensive alliance, at first against other tribes. If someone attacks us, the whole federation defends us. Initially, when we attack, the federation is not on our side. These are my allies, but there is a very strong development here of United Warbands. And then the entire federation attacks, so it's a very powerful mechanic. Ultimately, our goal is to unite this federation and get all the lands of all federation members for free. Okay, in the meantime, I'll also improve relations with all federation members. I'm not sure what it depends on. Sometimes they leave these federations, so I try to have improved relations with them. If you know why they might leave my federation, let me know. We can now choose the first development for our federation, and it will be joint raiding. It's definitely the best. This is the strongest improvement, and now our progress in gaining further reforms will slow down a bit. So, let's recruit a mercenary group. They are super cheap. Usually our chiefs are really good leaders. In this case, I got an average one for battles, but very good for capturing forts, especially since there are no three Elvial forts in this region. So we're fighting exclusively for the capital. We will start our wars by humiliating our rivals. 47,000 of my fellow tribesmen, in contrast to their 18,000, they stand no chance. Wow, nice bonus for the chief. And to be honest with you, tribes are the only group here that can totally ignore stability at the beginning. Initially, I will go for the show of strength to show how we are the best leader in the area, which of course will give me 100 points of each type, which is is very powerful. It will give me prestige and it will work like humiliate a rival. So we will also get power projection. Every other country, for now, I will extract for money and war reparations, which basically would already allow me to advance to the next technology. But first, maybe we'll annex some additional territory. Unfortunately, it's currently very expensive. I can also reform my tribe. And honestly, since I only have one province, I'll go for a tribe that can travel for now or actually migrate. It costs me a bit of military points. But when we arrive at a territory, can I core it and move on? Yes, this is ours. So we can repeat this every now and then. You see, every added territory increases its price for us. And now, the second reform of our decreasing federation. Hey, someone left. Why? I want this tribal development grow, so it will start growing for us now. What bug did I find? OMG! Namely, I'm now waging a war to annex territories. And look, here is my province, which occupies part of this tribe's territory. I should take this as my territory normally, but I just conquered myself, and I lost the game. What the hell? 
Well, too bad, I went back after all. I won't transform into a migrating tribe. Because as you can see, I can conquer myself. So maybe I'll reform the first tier of our reforms to get this development progress, which will nicely accumulate for us. Now, another fight for territories. And honestly, it will be quite even. But thanks to my chief being a siege master, this war is going really in our favor. The coring process here is super weird because you can't click on this icon, but you can click on this icon. Paradox logic. And our tribe has slightly grown. Now I'll definitely be the strongest in my tiny federation. All right, I need to take care of breaking up these enemy armies because they walk around with 5,000 troops and they're ruining it for me. I have something like annexing a migratory tribe. It costs almost 200 diplomatic points, but I'll see what happens. And what will it give me? Do I get all their areas? 30 aggressive expansion? Wow. Hey, I get their entire area. How powerful that is. I can also build a ceremonial fire pit now, which I'm actually doing right away. We'll hire our cheaper advisors now. And looking at it, I really need a lot of administrative points. So I'll focus on them. And what's super important now when settling down is to make sure that these two points don't exceed one at a time, because then you'll use two points at once to increase the province's development level. And since this develops very slowly, it's better to take control when you have only one point. All right, let's do another show of strength. Wow, I can even pick one era advancement. Honestly, it's the first time I'm doing this here. I don't know if the colony development boost will work in this region, so I'll test it. Otherwise, there's aggressive expansion or transfer subject. And our lands expanded a bit. That's about how much I have now. All right, time to advance another tribal reform. And I think we could use diplomatic reputation and a diplomatic relationship here. Because I can't click on this since there are no neighbors from the old world and it's so weak. Hmm, I guess it's time to improve relations with everyone around. Our Coveta just keeps growing, there's no other way to describe it. I'm pushing my boundaries more towards Central America. I want to take all the territories, for example, that the Apaches have. Here, Lipan really has quite a bit, so why not conquer it? I have the impression that the mechanic of annexing a migrating tribe works completely differently for us now than for typical countries that are already developed. Yes, these are your favorite borders. And look at it now, even better! All right, I've expanded even more, but I need to slow down. How should I put it? Nations began to enter a coalition against me, and it's starting to be an increasingly large coalition. Yes, I feel that these 5% of development will be useful to me. I'd rather take the development growth Ooh, the English have appeared. All right, so I need to figure out a way to reach them. Finally, I'm also achieving administrative level five, thanks to which I can choose ideas. And I'll tell you, I'm picking the strongest ideas in the game, namely these. Apart from the fact that they have a lot of powerful modifiers, there are also these ideas that reduce the development cost in several policies. So if someone wants to play as a tall USA, I think there aren't better ideas currently. Actually, I have no idea what determines whether someone wants to join our federation or not. If you know, please write it to me. Because there are some modifiers, but they don't tell me anything. In such a vast empire, the worst part is traveling and suppressing revolts, because they are simply everywhere. It would be useful if something here was always highlighted, triggered, or I don't know, if it would open somewhere on the side. Seriously, I want to keep track of this, but it's incredibly annoying. The manpower numbers I'll get for placing this building. Wow! And here, production. How much bigger my income will be. It's worth doing. And just between us, there are only two valuable buildings here. This monthly reform progress from building. There used to be this tribal development grow, but Paradox significantly weakened it, doubling its price and having its effect. It's surprising, but a conquistador from Portugal. He tried to make us and our rival bury the hatchet. Portugal, what even is that? I didn't notice its presence at all. Honestly, I'm enjoying playing as this tribe right now. There's a lot to do. I'm waging many wars. I'm playing around with this federation, which has already regrown to seven members. So I only need two more to return to the original number. Sometimes additional tribes appear for me to invite, sometimes not. I don't know what it depends on. For a moment I had one, but it's gone now. So I really don't understand this mechanic. But our Kuweta is expanding peacefully for now. Actually, it might expand even more in a bit. Oh, England is getting closer. England is nearing. I need to somehow acquire territory here. And then we can reform. Besides, I'm not sure then if our federation might get a significant bonus and the ability to invite others to our federation. I remember something like that being the case. See? No colonizers neighboring federation. By the way, I'm down to just the last reform to click on. Ooh, a new leader. 636. Six. All right, definitely better. I think, but he's certainly younger. Oh, I also see the Portuguese army walking around here. Well, this time I started a more evenly matched war. But you know, this war is essentially about controlling most of the northern plains. And clearly my federation is winning so far, although we suffer heavier losses. Settling in Canada. Oh, I gained quite a chunk of land. Now I can appoint a peacetime leader. 664. Six, he's a bit better. 
I also crafted my first ancestor totem. Diplomatic reputation, it might come in handy for creating federations. We'll see. Alright, this war I'm about to wage will be strange. Because, honestly, when I look at it, from a diplomatic perspective, like four countries, max, with which I'm waging war, but according to this, there are more, and I need to wage war with them to share borders with the English. That's why we're fighting. Ah, it's now clearer, but I have a technological advantage, so I'm crushing them in early battles, taking this technology at a 70% higher price. God, it hurts. But wait, how much can I gather? Alright, I have to take it now. And first off, I'll be demanding these smaller tribes here, which I don't really want to conquer. Often they have just one or two provinces. They aren't needed when I can conquer entire vast areas, like Black Hoof Cree or Biao. And actually, after a few one battles, it's not as hard as I thought. Admittedly, I had to hire a mercenary company. I don't know where the Indians would get mercenaries from, but that doesn't matter. You can clarify that for me in the comments. It's really funny how the AI operates in this game now. Look, they went to the farthest provinces just to avoid participating in the war. And look at the Europeans. And they immediately brought some diseases with them until the end of this year. This was much stronger. Wow, get these Europeans out of here. I can also elevate the rank of my tribe from duchy to kingdom. And it's just in time because my gathering was running out, I had to burn our reform progress on gathering already. Alright, it's time to settle next to the colonies and see what happens. It's clearly growing, growing, things are lively, and look, I have a bonus to the growth of our federation because of Newfoundland and Castile. Where is Castile? Uh huh. Alright, we aren't reforming yet because we've settled. Meaning, uh, first we need to integrate our federation. Alright, but I won't rush the unification of our federation just yet. First, I'll conquer as much as possible before the coalition becomes too big, and only then will we reform. Form. What I'm certain of is that we first need to create a federation and only after that click here to commence trade with those folks from Europe, especially since it would be good to accumulate as many points as possible. Welcome to the new member of our federation. I don't know why it joined me, but that's awesome. Hey, and another one joins. Great. Okay, I don't know what's happening, but I can add more nations to my federation. Look, I already have 11 and more will join soon. And more. Black Hoof. Oh, that's a lot of territory. I wanted to conquer everything and now they are joining me for free. What is even happening here? Alright, our federation has grown significantly. We have 18 nations in this federation from all over America. Literally the whole thing. And I think now is a good time to reform. Honestly, whenever I look at declaring war on someone, I'm attacked by the English or the Spanish, so I'm kind of stuck. So now, let's do this. First off, we form into one country, new traditions and ambitions. Our state is undergoing a series of changes that will quickly alter our identity and ideals. Yes, we could adopt new traditions and ambitions, which would be Cree, as that's our new name, but they seem weaker than what we have. Look, what we currently have, which is pretty good for conquest, core creation, a bit for production, building, discipline, we have taxes, higher stability, pretty cool. And the Cree ones look like this, building costs, stability, production, more manpower, morale instead of discipline. And we know how it is now, morale is useless. So personally, I prefer the ideals we had. And from what I see, we can't create a new federation, nor join a federation. It's great that Paradox fixed this. The coalition ended, it dissolved, great. But as you see, we don't have that much territory, right? Unless we reform, make contact with Europeans and see what happens. It looks much better. Ah, where's my technology? I should only be one technology level behind the country I was reforming with, right? And such reformed Cree is one of the largest countries in the world. Look, at the moment, we are the largest. So, an invasion of England, Spain? Let me know in the comments. We will be reforming into a feudal monarchy? Alternatively, an elective monarchy? Monarchy might also be an interesting choice, but that absolutism, we're approaching the era of absolutism. So, you know, I will also go for better taxes and faster reforming of our country. I earned very few of those points. Too bad. We also have three estates. Uh, healers, that's how it should be translated. The nobility and merchant guilds. I wonder if I have any special privileges, but at first glance, I don't see any new ones specific to our nations. That's a shame. Oh my god, now try to manage this country, reform everything, add estates. Ah! And no, I don't have any new missions. Oh well. Ah, and the most important thing right now is that we are losing rapid collapse society on a monthly tick. Oh, I lost the coalition. You see, we lost it. We can also become an empire right away. Great. I caught up with the technology, but what surprised me is that we didn't have it at all before. And we need to start building a spy network on Spain. Because from the ninth diplomatic technology level, we get the ability to steal technology, which will allow us to catch up even faster and better. Army, 14 to 4,000. We need to retain 62,000 so there's some downsizing ahead for me. But really, it looks good. I overlooked some tribes here. I missed the Cree, and then more in Canada. And if you would like to see a new tactic for quickly and effectively forming HRE, I recommend this video. 